uh, mitral valve uh, uh, abnormalities can um, just be categorized in two very, very basic categories. They, uh, typically, the uh, mitral valve either uh, opens uh, or doesn't open adequately, what we call mitral stenosis, uh, or it doesn't close adequately, uh, and uh, where it leads to the valve being leaky, or what we call mitral regurgitation. So the most common uh, abnormality related to rheumatic heart disease, when if you've had rheumatic fever when you were younger as a child, it can lead uh, many, many years later to develop the uh, development of um, uh, an abnormality of the mitral valve leaflets where uh, there's calcium deposits and things that have built up uh, and the leaflets just simply don't open adequately. Um, the uh, uh, more typical uh, abnormality that we see by far, however, uh, is mitral regurgitation. Uh, mitral regurgitation is where the valves don't close adequately, uh, and this can result from a number of different things. If you've had a heart attack, uh, and now you have parts of the uh, uh, wall of the heart that's not controlling the valve and able to help it close adequately, you can get mitral regurgitation. If you have any damage to any of the cords that hold the, the valve, you can get mitral regurgitation. If you have an enlargement of the heart, perhaps the most common thing that we see, now the valve leaflets pull apart and you can get leakage of the heart valve. Now when that happens, the heart needs to pump a certain amount of blood forward and if, it's, uh, and if some of it's going backwards, it's just gotta work harder to pump that amount of blood forward in order to get adequate circulation to the rest of the body. So uh, a leaky valve makes the heart function less efficiently, and if it leaks enough, then we have to think sometimes in terms of either replacing it or cinching it up uh, or doing something to decrease the leakage.